Before I start this video, I just want to thank Arteco for making my new icon. I'll put a link in the description to his YouTube channel. Check him out. The bar is pretty low when it comes to getting your game on pretty much any digital platform. That's exactly how games like Meme Runner or Black Tiger are made onto consoles. But no platform is more notorious for lack of quality control than Steam. Steam has a lot of bottom of the barrel games, as in games that make games like Spyro Enter the Dragonfly look like a masterpiece in every sense of the word. And that's because they have absolutely no quality control, and that's how games like Minor Ultra Adventures exist. I first saw that game when, uh, shortly after Mario Odyssey came out, and I kind of forgot about it until I got a Steam account of my own, and I uh, decided to buy it because I had some money left over from when I bought Sonic Generations, and I immediately regretted it. I don't know what I expected, I knew it was going to be bad, but like, so I, I don't know why I got it, but I did. So I'm making this review because I want to make my 99 cents worth it. Actually, um, I usually film my I usually film my reviews here, but since this is a PC game, I guess it'd make more sense if I actually you know record my desktop. So uh, that is what I'm going to do. All right, here we go. Oops, I clicked ahead in time instead. Guess I'm playing that. All right, fine. Such a gross icon. Actually, I want to see what the general opinion on this game is, so let's check out some Steam reviews first. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the, some reviews. Dennis is a furry. Recommended. Please kill me. Not recommended. She took my effing kids. This is all I have left. Recommended. Alright, no more stalling. Okay, a little more stalling. The game itself doesn't actually give you a story, so I had to go find some outside resources, and I found a site called Giant Bomb with an article on it, and apparently this game is actually based off some Brazilian restaurant I'm not going to bother pronouncing the name of. Even the main character in this game is actually based off their mascot. The game story is pretty simple. A bunch of aliens invade the land and, for some reason, threaten the restaurant's business. Oh, I love this part in the article. The aliens have taken control of the Illuminati Pyramid, which is an uncanny symbolization of fast food restaurant power over restaurant business. What? Okay, now let's finally get into it. Wow. I, I don't even know where to start. The title screen reminds me of one of those really bad Disney ripoff movies like Ratatouille or A Car's Life. Look at it, does it not? The title screen isn't even in English, or even the whole game, despite the fact I got this from the US Steam page. It's all in Portuguese. Oh my god, this MIDI music. Why is there MIDI music in a 2017 game? MIDI is kind of outdated by a little. This screen and even the game aren't even the right aspect ratio. It's stretched 16 by 9 rather than actual widescreen. I had to fix it through editing, so thankfully you guys aren't going to have to deal with a stretched picture anymore. I still got a question, why this game in 4x3 to begin with? This is only the title screen, I already hate this game. Huh. I'm glad to see the bad Disney ripoff art style is in full force in the game itself. Oh my god, he looks so happy when he dies. Anyway, this game is a linear 3D platformer. You're growing on each stage as you get to the end while traversing through various obstacles. Whether that be climbing up a beanstalk or sliding down a texture in the sky. The difference in this game compared to other platformers is you have to deal with some of the worst controls ever. Tank controls are thankfully a thing that died in the late 90s because publishers eventually realized Mario 64's method of movement is the way to go in 3D games. But for some godforsaken reason, tank controls are alive and well in this game. This game came out two decades after everyone realized how clunky tank controls are. Okay, so if you don't know what tank controls are, well, you move forward by holding forward on the D-pad, or arrow keys in this case, regardless of what direction the camera is facing. You turn by holding left or right while running or standing still, and you can back up by holding down. Pretty much every modern game just has you tilting the analog stick wherever you want to go, regardless of the genre. My only guess as to why this game has such a ridiculously outdated control method is because this game has no controller support. They probably just thought tank controls would be better with the arrow keys. And if that is the case, why did they just add controller support? I already hate using a keyboard for video games, so forcing that just makes this game feel so much worse than it already is. I will say at the very least it kept things simple. You use the arrow keys to move, Z to jump, and X to attack, so at the very least I didn't find myself looking at the keyboard repeatedly just to remind myself where the right keys are too often. 
Even without the forced keyboard controls, this is still the worst controlling game I've ever played. I never thought I would compliment games like Sonic 06 or Spyro 4 for allowing the player to walk forward because apparently that's a thing that's actually possible to screw up, as Minor Ultra Adventures has shown me. Yeah, this isn't me intentionally walking off to this side. The game seriously just does not allow you to walk forward. The camera is always tilted slightly to the right, and why? This makes what should be basic platforming so much harder because you can't see what's ahead of you. That's not even the worst part, the game allows you to double jump. Selectively. Okay, for some reason you can double jump sometimes. As in when you press the jump button in the air, the game doesn't always let you jump again. The only way to consistently double jump is if you hold the jump button down, even then. When you double jump isn't always the same. Sometimes it's instant, gimping your jump. Other times it's spaced out, which freaked me out each time it did because I wasn't sure if my second jump would come out at all. Oh, it does not end there. Minor Ultra Guy here has a unique ability of jumping endlessly under certain platforms, which I'm sure is intentional. There's these hearts scattered everywhere, you collect them to regain health, and it doesn't seem to be a limit at how much health you can have. Not that that really matters because there's no post hit invincibility, which has moments like this. Wait, am I at negative health? Honestly, I'm more annoyed with the constant voice clips that play each time you get hit rather than the BS way of dying because if I got worked up over that I would have been far far angrier at this game thanks to some pretty awful level design and dumb enemy placement. There's only four levels in a boss so I'm gonna cover each individual level. The first one is this grassy field ends up with a castle and a dragon which sounds way cooler than it actually is. Aside from the copious amounts of jank this game brings by default, the first level is mostly inoffensive. The level design isn't what I call good, but there isn't too much BS except for a few spots. The first will be this water wheel. Actually getting across it is more janky than a snake from Sonic Adventure. I just ran on the edge of the wheel because I didn't trust those platforms enough. I somehow never died here but I felt like I was each time. I'm sure I would have died if I actually used the platforms like the game intended. There's also this stupid not Sonic spring. Thankfully it's not very dangerous, it's just really annoying with these controls and camera. Finally there's the end. At the very end you go down the slide and the game immediately raises the difficulty to 11. I'm serious, this is the hardest part in the game. The game out of nowhere throws this incredibly precise platforming section and I don't know if you noticed but this is not a game that should have precise platforming in it. I only was able to get through it thanks to dumb luck. I mean look at this. You know what makes this so much worse? There's no checkpoints in this game so if you die at all Back to the beginning with you, and oh my god, that sucks. I genuinely didn't think I could actually beat this game, because this game's level design is so stupid. The next level and every level after that thankfully don't have anything nearly as stupid in them. Anyway, the next level is this slide in the sky. This is easily the worst looking level in the game, which is saying a lot. I'm not really sure what this slide is supposed to be, and this part has a really stretched texture in it. It looks really, really bad. Anyway, the level has you sliding through this ugly thing in the sky. There's some pretty bad issues here. The controls are unsurprisingly bad, you can't jump at all. You have to rely on these ramps to get across some jumps, and the level itself will sometimes fling you up randomly. There's this one part where there's a row of hearts, but it's too high to actually get, and it seems to be the one part of the level that won't fling you upwards, so I think these might actually be impossible to get. I haven't even mentioned the main issue in this level, these little orb things. Throughout the whole level, they can just slide into you at any point, because they come up from behind you and there's no way to tell it's coming. You just have to hope you don't get hit too much. I eventually made it, though I had to cheat a little bit by swerving up the slide. I will give this level one thing, there is one part in this game that brought me some amount of joy, and it was in this level. There's a part where the slide flings you into a funnel, and I kinda like the idea of sliding down a funnel. This is the best level in the game, and it's only because of this. The next level is this Egyptian desert with some robots and a pretty bad frame rate. Okay, I don't have the greatest computer, but I, I think I could run this game. It could run Jungle Joyride just fine, but not this. Apparently Minor Ultra Adventures is where it draws the line. Anyway, this level is mostly empty space, meaning you can skip a large portion of it just by walking through the desert. Their goal in this level is to get in this giant robot thing so you can launch a missile at the all-seeing eye, so you can get inside without getting zapped and make it through this incredibly generic platforming section. 
Actually, this level has a lot of that in how that I think about it. I admittedly like the concept of this level, I just like how stupid it is. Like, why is not only the all-seeing eye here, but also giant robots? I need to know Minor Ultra Adventures lore. The stage is also pretty easy. It took me a bit to figure out what to do because it's really not obvious, but otherwise it only becomes somewhat dangerous at the end. It is still a pretty long stage though, so it really, really stings if you manage to die at the end. The final level before the final boss is the Beanstalk, and it's the easiest level in the game. It's the easiest because for some reason the game allows you to jump endlessly against the Beanstalk, and the moment I learned you can do that, well, yeah. I honestly have no idea if the level would be hard if you couldn't do that, I learned it so early that I couldn't say. This one glitch, which I have no idea how they let through, is the reason why this is the one level I didn't die at all in. Anyway, final boss time. I would normally put a spoiler here, but... Would anyone actually get mad at me if I spoiled the ending to Minor Ultra Adventures? The final boss is... Mike Wazowski? He just runs around in circles while firing lasers at you, so you have to jump on these cannons to fire back at him. I just jumped on them at random and after a few deaths, I eventually got him. A pretty sucky final boss, but that's exactly what I expected. Wait, I guess I need to open up Google Translate now. You did it! Now everyone can eat at Best Restaurant World. Oh yeah, I actually forgot this game was about a restaurant. I'm not done yet. This game actually has DLC, which I didn't know about until the night I was gonna finish editing. So, um... Thank you, Minor Ultra Adventures. Mm. The DLC level has you hoverboarding and boosting through a bunch of floating platforms, and oh my god, no one's allowed to complain about reignited skateboard controls anymore because Minor Ultra Adventures is far, far worse. Whenever you're in the air, you're constantly spinning around, and if you happen to land in any way that's not right set up, you die instantly. This sounds fair, but it's so hard to stay right side up, especially when your boost trail blocks your view. This is the cause of at least one third of my deaths. The other two thirds were from overshooting or undershooting every jump because it's really hard to tell when you should boost and when you should not boost. I'll be honest, I didn't beat this level. I got as far as this hill part, but then the game decided I needed to die because why not? I didn't beat this because this is actually worse than the main game. At least things were more consistent in the main game. Here, I used the same strategy each time and had vastly different results each time. There was even a time when I died the moment I touched the ground in the beginning. All these things combined with a really slow deaths because of a low barrier made me not want to bother with this. There might be other levels in this DLC, I don't know, considering the DLC is the same price as the main game. There probably is, but I beat the main game, so that's enough. But hey, at least that god awful mini music is gone. Instead we have what sounds like the Beastie Boys. I don't know music very well, so I don't know if it's actually them, but it definitely sounds like copyrighted music, so that's probably illegal. As a whole, Minor Ultra Adventures only took me about an hour. The first stage took about half of that time, so that's fun. And the DLC took 30 minutes, so uh... Yeah, it's a 99 cent game and it's for reasons outside of just the poor quality. So Minor Ultra Adventures is unsurprisingly a bad game. Probably the worst game I've played in my life. Though, it's not that shocking. Like I said in the beginning of the video, Steam has no quality control. So it's far more shocking games like Bubsy 3D or Superman 64 exist. Though this game is still bad, it's just that, you know, the, the standards are different on a digital platform. <laughs> so, uh, the only context I would recommend this game is, um, as a joke gift to a friend, or to someone you hate. That's it, don't actually buy it for yourself. I spent 99 cents and I still feel ripped off. I, I mean, I got a video out of it but that was like a year later. So uh, yeah, this game sucks.